past life astrology today eight clues from your horoscope so it's very difficult to see what exactly did you do in your past life or in your previous lifetimes because of which you are suffering now but we can get very crucial clues uh, if certain planets are placed in particular positions and especially the malefics or the lord of the dustana so today we will discuss about the lords of the 6th, 8th, 12th houses and the natural malefics Saturn, Rahu, Ketu, Sun and Mars because all the pain and suffering of this world is coming from these 8 areas. Okay, So either it's coming from the 5 natural malefics or the lords of the Dustana houses. There is no other suffering outside of this. Okay, Primary suffering like horrendous suffering like very difficult you are just crying and there's no solution okay so some kind of suffering where you feel life is not worth living anymore and disclaimer this is going to be a very heavy video so be on your guards before you watch it all right so now what does your saturn indicate so number one saturn so wherever saturn is sitting in your chart it is possible that you might have neglected that area of life. Now, what does it mean, neglected that area? So, if your Saturn is in the seven, does, does it mean you have neglected your marriage? Well, it could be or the person that the particular house represents. So, for example, the seventh house represents your spouse, right? And many times when I make these videos, people are asking always in the comments, what about first house, second house, third house, fourth house, fifth house, sixth house, seventh house, eighth house, ninth house, tenth house, eleventh house, twelfth house, right? So please watch the Astrology Basics videos uh, from my playlist. Uh, only then you will know what every house means and you will also get to know in the playlist what does a particular planet mean. So you can correlate, all right? Because it is not possible for me to speak for every house, for every planet, for every ascendant. That will be like a video for six months, okay? But nonetheless, if you have seen where your Saturn is, and especially if your Saturn is in a bad dignity or it is afflicted, then it can certainly mean that you have neglected. So example, seventh house, you have neglected your marriage. So what does it mean to neglect your marriage? It, it primarily means you have not uh, deliberately walked on it no, to have a good relationship with your spouse, not just in your last previous lifetime, but in many 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 previous lifetimes so that is like a karmic bondage that you are having so because of that what happens in this lifetime people might uh, not any people but uh, your spouse or your partners might end up ignoring you or neglecting you and neglect and uh, neglect is very painful right how do you feel when somebody deliberately ignores you or even unknowingly you feel it's very painful to the to the self-esteem right you you feel worthless so if you have such a placement like saturn and seventh and especially if it is in a bad dignity as i said or afflicted then please give time and attention to your spouse okay you need to understand that there has been some uh, terrible karma which we have performed only because of which these placements are there otherwise it would not be there all right so now that's for saturn so put extra emphasis on the house where Saturn is sitting. Otherwise, the the toxicity will continue life after life, okay? Because now what will happen? You may see, oh, that person, so you neglected somebody, so now that person is neglecting you. So you feel, oh, that person is anyway neglecting me. Why should I give attention? No, you have to give attention. It's payback time. Wherever there are malefics, it's payback time, okay? So you need to pay back. <laughs> Number two, a bad Rahu. So, Wherever Rahu is sitting or if Rahu is afflicted in the chart or Rahu is in an enemy sign or you know in debility, then it could mean that you have cheated that area of life. Now, again, if Rahu you know is in the 7th or 5th, it might mean you have cheated your spouse or yeah, your lovers or your children 5th house. Okay, so, so that means uh, in this lifetime, they might cheat on you. Now, this is not guaranteed. It depends on the overall chart, but it could happen that if Rahu is in, uh, like, for example, the 5th, 7th, or 8th, it could happen that your spouse cheats on you. But does it mean it will certainly happen? 
or does it mean you should always keep thinking oh you know my spouse is cheating secretly you know one day they will cheat on me no it's not it is not to create fear but you need to understand that in this lifetime you have to maintain extra caution that you do not cross the red line okay so limit your interactions with the opposite sex because rahu in 5th 7th or 8th might give you tendencies to cheat okay now this is like a double edged sword you might cheat again because see why 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 you might cheat again because you might have been cheating previously also so just because you have a rahu in 5th 7th or 8th it does not mean that your spouse will cheat on you it could also mean you know you you are going to cheat so this will perpetuate the karma and one lifetime it will come for you where your spouse will like cheat on you and all the karma will come and that will be unbearable okay so therefore don't assume that if rahu is in these three houses you know your spouse will cheat on you it could be that you cheat okay so maintain extra caution maintain distance only interact with the opposite sex whenever whenever it's like that's the last option okay so for men stop stop hovering around and you know roaming around here there <laughs> or you know sending messages to ladies uh, friend requests to strangers or you know instagram models and all this so, so please limit your interactions because you may face difficulty in maintaining commitments to your marriage and if if god willing your karma comes and then you meet somebody and then that's it you 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 get cheated okay so either ways even if that happens you cannot change it but from your side make sure you don't do it okay so same for rahu maybe in you know second sixth or tenth yeah something to do with the profession you know like taking bribes or something like that okay so careful number 3 wherever ketu is sitting bad ketu no ketu misled you you have misled somebody ketu is headless okay so you have spread false information or yeah whatever you know you you have spoken lies or you 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 have misled the person at the end and the person feels headless or you have confused somebody okay so that is why they say wherever ketu sits there is confusion why because somebody ends up coming and confusing you with some wrong information because you have done the same uh, to somebody else right so therefore suppose a uh, ketu is in any house you know like uh, 10th house so don't confuse people in your workplace they might end up confusing you that's fine but you should not confuse others okay or mislead others don't gossip don't get into rumor spreading and all this this is very 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 detrimental for your ketu okay occasionally you do once in a while everybody does that including me nobody is an exception but this perpetual gossip perpetual rumor mongering that's very dangerous okay so sometime it happens uh, that's okay try not to do it but it should not become like a everyday affair or even a weekly thing oh every day once in a week you are sitting and just gossiping that's not good okay so as i said you know try your best sometimes these things happen because of slip of tongue which which is okay and if it happens you should apologize to the person uh, but try your best not to mislead others okay number 4 mars so wherever mars is sitting especially if it is badly placed afflicted or you know kanjang lords of dusanas it is very likely that you have punished that person more than what they deserve okay more than what they deserve so it's like somebody <laughs> somebody did something to you and you just uh, you went on you know you went and <laughs> and knocked, knocked his or her teeth out teeth out okay so uh, that and it's not justified okay i mean of course it depends on what the person has done but you know i i hope you understand what i'm trying to say okay so if you have punished somebody more than what they deserve then this lifetime the same punishment will come back to you okay so people may do all sorts of things okay which i don't want to speak here so at the end you have to realize whatever is happening to you is is a product of our own karma okay whatever is happening to us uh, unless we have done it to ourselves uh, to somebody else nobody mother nature law of karma 
God will never permit somebody else to do that to us, okay? Of course, God does not go on uh, sanctioning, uh, like, you know, trouble for others. <laughs> but it's our own karma, the law of karma, basically, okay? So, therefore, in, in your horoscope, wherever Mars is, you need to be very, very, very extremely careful about punishing people related to that area of life. So, Mars in the whatever, Mars in 7th, okay, be very careful, you know, in dealing with your spouse, don't get physical, be careful with your words, whatever it is, you need to be very careful, okay, Mars in 3rd, you know, brothers, sisters, very, very, very careful with your words, and especially if you are in an authority position, you have to be 100,000 times more careful, otherwise it can lead to a disaster, if you perpetuate this, <laughs> then uh, you you will uh, see hellish life, okay? Uh, maybe after this lifetime or in this lifetime itself, okay? Now, number five, what about Surya? So, wherever Surya sits, you might have dominated that person or that area of life. So, Surya sits in the 10th house. It's a great placement, right? It's in Dikbal. But your colleagues and your could be anybody in your workplace, you know, they might feel that, you know, uh, you are kind of dominating them and uh, not listening to what they are saying and forcing them to do what you think is right, okay? Now, that's not necessarily bad if you are a very good leader and you can see what people should do. But it does not mean that you have the power, you have the right to uh, dismiss everybody and override people, okay? So, that is not correct. Now, if, if Surya is in a bad dignity, then... And again, afflicted or conjunct lord of Dustanas, then it can mean that they come and uh, dominate you. It can mean that, okay, especially like if Surya is in 6th, 8th or 12th, others come and dominate you and you have no option uh, rather than to uh, submit to them, okay. So that could be possible. But in general, you should take precautions, okay, so, so that you don't perpetuate your uh, karma further. Number, number 6, wherever your 6th lord is sitting, you know, or whichever planet is in the sixth, it is very likely that you have, um, or rather let's, you know, discuss the eighth house. That's more interesting. <laughs> so if a planet is in the eighth or wherever your eighth lord is sitting, you have given some kind of emotional suffering to that person. Okay. So for example, your fourth lord is in the eighth or eighth lord is in the fourth. You know, you have given terrible pain to your mother. It is possible in your previous lifetimes. Okay. So therefore, if you have if you have these placements and especially you know in debility or yeah afflicted, then trying not to torment that person emotionally. Okay, so fourth house mother, fifth house kids, uh, yeah seventh house spouse, you know ninth house father. Okay, first house yourself. <laughs> so therefore, very 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 important that you try to understand why. You are suffering because you have tormented somebody, you know, like harassed somebody, blackmailed somebody, punished somebody, or whatever, you know. Emotionally, you have given extreme suffering. And that is why the Eighth Lord is placed. And, and then, you know, the people end up doing the same to you. So, for example, you know, Fourth Lord is in the Eighth, Eighth Lord is in the Fourth. Your mother comes and becomes the source of your suffering. Of course, this does not mean that, you know, you have to just keep forgiving everybody. But at least don't try to create new bad karma. And okay? that's the objective of the video. It's not to tell you that don't go and seek justice, but to warn you that don't perpetuate the cycle by creating further bad karma. Okay, Ugra karma, right? Then number, two, uh, then number seven, wherever the 12th Lord is sitting, 12th Lord will show that you have not repaid your loans. <laughs> now, what is this? So, if the 12th Lord and the 7th house combine, you will see your marriage will have a lot of expenses. Why? Not because it's your marriage or it's the way in India or somewhere else. No, it's not the reason. The reason is because in your marriage, uh, in your wedding especially, those people will come, maybe your in-laws or you know your relatives or your friends, everybody will come to eat or you know to get things from you and that's the money which you uh, which you are spending, which actually uh, you had you were taken from some from them in the previous lifetimes as a loan, and you didn't repay. Okay, so therefore, 
No, it could be anything. Twelfth Lord is in the tenth, tenth Lord is in the twelfth, you know, afflicted, whatever, debilitated. Um, you are going on taking loans for your business. Nothing is working. You know, this is not working. That is not working. So, it's not that it's not working. It's going where it has to go. So, don't create further karma. So, suppose your twelfth uh, Lord is in the seventh. Don't take loans from your in-laws or you know somebody like that. You know, like twelfth Lord in the fourth. Don't take loans from your mother or twelfth Lord in second. Don't take loans from your family members. And try to repay some loans which they have. Of course, you don't have to go and repay all their loans. But in case they need help, try to help. Because that karma is there. You you are destined to lose money through your family members. Okay. So therefore, try to help them if required. Uh, without, without being stupid, of course. Okay. But don't take further loans. Go to the bank if required. Don't go to that house. Okay. Yeah. Unless things are really bad and the bank is not lending you. And even if... You are going to that particular house where your twelfth lord is, or the lord where uh, the the lord of a house which is in the twelfth. Then please repay the loan immediately because you will have to pay it back with compound interest. Okay, very very problematic. Last but not the least, sixth house wherever sixth lord is sitting or whichever planet is in the sixth, you might have bullied that person. Okay, so this is similar to Sun and Mars, like uh, punishing and dominating, but you could say bullying, okay? So, because, any, of course, Mars is the Karka, so it will be very similar to Mars, okay? <clears throat> so, punishing, uh, bullying, like, you know, I mean, you know what bullying is, right? So, don't bully, wherever Sixth Lord is, don't bully that person. You know, Sixth Lord in Tenth, you know, don't bully your colleagues, don't bully your boss, you know, Sixth Lord in Fifth, don't bully your children or your subordinates, don't do that. Otherwise, you will perpetuate your karma, okay? So, that is the objective of this video. I hope you liked it. And if you liked it, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. And for personalized consultations, please visit my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him irrespective of your past or future or present life karma. Alright, take care. Jai Siya Ram.